Welcome to the uh, last two lectures of this course and it is about a topic which concerns all of us, whether you are having some problem or you are not having a problem and perhaps all of us need it and yet there is a lot of myth around it and lot of questions around it. This is one of the most common presenting complaint uh, in not only psychiatry clinics, but also in neurology and lot, lot of these other clinics and that is sleep. So, I have tried to label it as uh, to sleep or not to. The young generation obviously sleeps less and that is a constant source of uh, trouble and fight with their parents, but they also cannot however late they want to keep awake and for how many days they want to keep awake, eventually sleep catches up like hunger catches up. So, sleep is one of the basic functions like uh, hunger, thirst, sex all controlled by the limbic system and um, hypothalamus to sleep or not to sleep. If you ask people when they have something to do, they will think that okay, why, why sleep more. Some students come and tell me that uh, they do not want to sleep, they want to study or do other things. Even those who do not want to study want to play on their Facebook or chat or do with all this invasion of uh, cyber technology. Obviously, the sleep patterns are altering. But sleep is something which has been there from ages. So, the first question is why sleep? Let us understand about sleep before talking about the problems with sleep or disorders. Why sleep? Sleep has a restorative function, you get tired and uh, your body wants to rest and gather up energy. So, one way of doing it is go to sleep the energy expenditure will be less, you will be doing less thing and when you get up your energy and your mind and everything is restored. If you look at there have been these are the theories, one is a restorative theory, one is a psychoanalytical explanation which Freud, Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung, they build up a the whole theory based on the unconscious and conscious and how the sleep really creates dreams and how the sleep really, this phases of sleep actually take up whatever is from your unconscious and express it in the form of dreams. Information processing, Francis Crick, the guy who discovered DNA with uh, Watson, uh, brought out this process of information processing, where, the, where he said that uh, whatever goes into your mind during the daytime and awake hours is actually integrated in the dream sleep into your existing memory, reverse learning. Some of it is eliminated, some of it is like uh, integrated into the existing memory and there is something called what you call a AM theory, activation integration theory given by Hobson. Now, these are all theories giving a model of why people need sleep. Activation synthesis also is almost like, however, Hobson may not agree, but almost nearer to what Freud said that whatever goes into your head, the brain gets activated during dream sleep and it is the, the unnecessary part is eliminated, the whole brain is activated and he also calls it almost like a psychotic state where hallucinations are replaced by dreams. But these are as far as the theory about dream sleep is concerned. The deep sleep obviously, it has a restorative function as mentioned, and there is a lot of metabolic stuff which goes on into the sleep. Like when children are growing, the growth hormone which is very important for the growth of uh, a child is secreted mainly in the deep sleep, which is a non, non dream sleep. I will tell you about the stages when I, cortisol, 
temperature, we all, these are normal things to survive. So, the cycle of cortisol, which is a stress hormone, it is secreted more when you are stressed, the temperature regulation, like temperature is maximum when you are going to sleep and as you get towards the morning, the temperature of the body settles down. This may have some restorative function. So, body has its own rhythm and what is the proof of all these theories? The proof is, one is evolutionary evidence, neurochemistry and the morbidity and mortality which increases, animal experiments, circadian rhythm. Now, these are all proof that sleep is necessary. What is the evolutionary evidence? All animals sleep and to the extent that uh, like dolphin, when dolphin is sleeping, one half of the brain sleeps and the other is active and it keeps reversing all animals. Neurochemistry, we find definite changes in the, the which, you know, if you remember the neurotransmitters, the neurochemistry tells us there is a certain change in serotonin and acetylcholine level depending on what phase of sleep one is in. I will we'll, explain it as we move on. 4 to 10 hours is considered to be more or less the normal range. People who sleep for very long less than 4 hours or more than 10 hours have more bodily physical illnesses or mental illnesses associated with it. Animal experiments as I said, we know that all animals sleep. Circadian rhythm, circadian is a rhythm which is within 24 hours, it is obviously related to sunlight. So, over evolution, over millions of years, the mind has been trained to sleep and keep awake. This is one of the normal natural oscillations which exist. And there is an endogenous rhythm, which can be proven because uh, there have been experiments, where we have seen that a person was isolated from all other external indicators of uh, change within a circadian these are called zeitgebers, like sunlight, like uh, the artificial things like traffic, peak traffic, the, the fluctuation of uh, light at the peak hours. And this person was isolated and kept in a uniform light away from the vibration coming out of traffic, the peak fluctuations of the light, which happens everywhere, not only in India and everywhere. And then the person was left in a free running cycle and it was found that there is an endogenous rhythm, the rhythm which comes from within. In absence of all this external zeitgebers and that cycle runs up to 25 hours, 25 plus minus here and there. So, there is a natural rhythm, which our ex which over years as we develop this artificial contraption of time called clock, we have tried to fit it into 24 hours. So, we normally 12 to 12, that is artificial contraption, there is nothing in the nature which tells you that the, the whole thing runs around 12 to 12. We have made this clock in conjunction with the sunlight and so now, now you can think when people, when there was no electricity, people were working from sun, sunrise to sunset. So, they used to get up early, probably that uh, conception the, the myth or idea has come down that okay, if you get up early, you have obviously if you get up early when there is a more sunlight, you can work. And as the sun set, those people used to sleep early, but then they used to catch up their sleep by sleeping early till so the number of hours remains the same. Now, this is important to understand because if you are sleeping for a certain period, say for example, 8 hours, you are sleeping at 9 o'clock in the night when there is no sunlight and get up at 4 or 5, your your quota of sleep is full and then you get up by sunrise and work. Now, in modern times when you are working in um, artificial light, the whole 8 hours can be shifted here and there. You sleep at 3 o'clock in the night, you may get up at 11 o'clock in the morning, 8 hours are over, but next night, you will again be sleeping at the same time and that creates sort of disturbance and so you are breaking the natural rhythm. So, what is the ontogeny? Ontogeny is the development of sleep in a given person. The newborn sleep for about 80 percent of the time in their 24 hours and 50 percent of which is the REM sleep. REM is a the dream sleep. 
just remember this term, we will talk about it. Daytime napping persists till about 4 to 6 years. So, it is accepted that a 4 to 6 years sleeps in the daytime, but imagine a adolescent who sleeps in the daytime creates huge interpersonal problem with parents, because parents will come and say he has a board exam and he is sleeping more, but that is a myth. The myth is in the teenage there is a need for increased sleep, like a child probably it is a growing brain which gets more and more information, the network is getting complicated, all that information brain has to handle. There is a phase delayed, phase delayed in the sense as I said, they will sleep late, they will get up late in the morning, which is a teenage problem or it is not a problem, it is considered as a problem. So, stage 3, 4 which is a deep sleep and which is a non rapid eye movement sleep, it increases till pre-pubertal age, when there is a lot of hormonal change in puberty, the mind is uh, forming more complex networks and then there is an adult sleep, which is fragmented, REM latency and stage 3 food. So, the dream sleep in adults come faster than as in teenager or a newborn, the deep sleep decreases. So, this is a natural way it happens. So, if, if you try to understand it simply, 50 percent of sleep in a newborn is dream sleep, it stays 3, 4 increases. In a teenager the sleep, whole sleep pattern is more, although it is delayed, in adults it is like fragmented. This is just a picture of the brain, the, the, the type of uh, the areas of the brain which are involved in sleep control, thalamus if you remember thalamus, we talked about neuroanatomy which is the relay center and these are the neurotransmitters, 5 HT is also known as serotonin, this is nor epinephrine, this is a style choline, recall it from the initial and this is GABA. GABA. The interplay of all this triggers of the sleep and controls the sleep. Like for example, when the REM sleep is starting, REM sleep is the rapid eye movement sleep, acetylcholine levels increase from this area and also we see what you call a PGO spikes. This, this is a PGO spontane geniculate occipital. So, from the deeper the pontine area to the geniculate to occipital this whole spikes are seen, acetylcholine increases which is a trigger of dream sleep. Serotonin levels are high with motor activity and by the time sleep onset happens when you are sleeping the serotonin level has to fall, if there are high serotonin level the sleep will get disturbed. Norepinephrine is a system which controls the attentional mechanisms. In deep sleep which is the so, let me tell you, in a an REM sleep, which is a deep sleep, REM stands for rapid eye movement, rapid eye movement and an REM is non rapid eye movement. Now, there are, how, how did we know about it? So, just remember these brief terms, an REM sleep which is a deep, which has stage 1, 2, 3, 4, rapid eye movement which is a dream sleep, serotonin, acetylcholine, norepinephrine. So, this is what I was talking about, there is a sleep load, circadian rhythm, this is sleep, so 9 am, 3 pm, 9 pm. So, if you see the whole thing goes towards sleep, this is endogenous rhythm. So, your mind naturally has a pressure of waking up or sleeping. So, this wake propensity the tendency coupled with the sunlight is very high between this time 9 am to 9 pm, but as the sun sets here you can see it, the wake propensity 
goes down and your sleep pressure increases. This is natural in all living mammals, animals. And this is the this is what I was talking about. In a younger person, say if you see at 11 pm to 6 am, what you see is this pattern. There is a lot of deep sleep as the night progresses, there is a lot of episodes of dream sleep. In the older person, the deep sleep is very less. Even if it comes, it is for spikes. So as you grow old, now what is what is this? Let me see. Sleep latency, let me explain, is a period where you go to bed and the time you take to go to sleep. This is sleep latency. REM sleep is the dream sleep. Slow wave sleep is the deep sleep. This is stage 3 and 4. And then there is one stage 1, stage 2. So, like when you go to sleep, what happens is very simple. You are awake, you go to stage 1, then to stage 2, then to stage 3 and 4. Then, and this whole thing is for 90 minutes in a normal cycle, 8 hour cycle if you record. Then there is a 20 minute period of dream sleep, which is called REM. This is called NREM. So, what is happening is that you go off to sleep, you go to stage 1, you go to stage 2, then you go to stage 3 and 4, that is a 90 minute cycle. Then you go to a 20 minutes of dream sleep, then you again come back to stage 2, 3, 4, then again to REM sleep. So, over a night you keep oscillating between such a cycle. Now, what is the difference? How do we differentiate? I will tell you how we record the polysomnography. Each of these state has a definite characteristic, a definite frequency on EEG. You remember the frequencies of EEG alpha, beta, theta, delta. Stage 3 and 4 is characterized by delta sleep. So, delta which is 0 to 4, 0.5 to 4 hertz is abnormal in awake state. So, in awake state if you do a EEG and you are finding that is abnormal, but in sleep it is normal. Theta 4 to 7 is also partially present in towards stage 2 and stage 3. Stage 1 has alpha which is slowing down, so, alpha is 8 to 13 which is awake rhythm, it is slowing down towards 8 and 7 hertz if you remember. But this is not the only characteristic, when you are in non REM sleep, your body is relaxed, the whole bodily process slow down, but you can still move your hand and all. But REM sleep is a rapid eye movement sleep, when when you are dreaming, remember nature is very smart, nature has done. So, this is what is followed by first REM episode after 90 minutes. As night progresses, stage 4 slow wave sleep decreases, REM increases. So, slow wave sleep is 0 0.5 to 2 hertz synchronized. Nature is smart, when you are dreaming, the EEG changes to almost like awake like state in those 20 minutes, 30 minutes and as night increases, the stage 4 sleep decreases by 33 percent per cycle. Per cycle means from starting of sleep till the first REM cycle, end of REM cycle is one cycle. Every cycle like this, the stage 4 sleep decreases. So, when you are getting up in the morning actually, you are almost dreaming. The so, when the night progresses, suppose this is deep sleep and this is REM sleep, as the night progresses, the deep sleep decreases, REM increases. So, most of us if you look at your life, you will get up in the morning while you are dreaming. What is REM? Nature is smart, because nature always contrives to save you, to make you survive. In that situation, if everybody acts out on your dream, then you will hurt yourself, because your mind is not in control. So, what nature does, the only muscles which are working while you are dreaming, 
is eye muscles which keep moving horizontally or breathing muscles. Rest of the body is paralyzed, temporarily paralyzed because the mechanism which control your muscle tone are shut off. Why is it, does it happen and why do eye moves? In evolution, when they were predators, when people were living in jungles or animals living in jungle, they always had to, even when they are sleeping, they had to be careful that they should not be eaten up. So, probably that is the evolutionary mechanism by which I, if even if you close your eyes, your eyeball keeps scanning the environment for any threat. So, cats and other animals who live in a, sleep in a lighter stage, their eyes keep scanning and they immediately are on if there is a threat, but that has continued in us. Muscle atonia, so that you are dreaming and you do not want to really act out on your dream, you want to, you are thinking of murdering somebody and you. So, your muscles are paralyzed, you can think of murdering, but you do not go and kill and breathing muscles of course, because of breathing. So, and that is why we call it rapid eye movement, we see this rapid eye movement, the muscle movement are gone and your breathing muscles are on and the EEG is almost like awake EEG. Now, given this pattern of sleep in normal people for about 8 hours, we also have our intrinsic rhythm. You remember I told you about the endogenous rhythm. Each one of us is different. So, all this fight around that you cannot study in the night or you cannot get up early in the morning, there is no point telling people because some people are night owls and some are morning lark. There are some people who will get up early in the morning and function best and there are some people who function best at the night in a healthy individual. It can be altered because sleep has a wonderful capacity of adjusting. So, when you are tight pressed for work, you can sleep less and still survive, but sooner or later you will have to compensate for it. You cannot go on uh, compensating without sleep. You can change your rhythms depending on the circumstances, but more or less you have your own core pattern of endogenous rhythm. So, this is how we record actually, if you look at it. So, we just put a EEG, this is anterior, this is posterior, that is a front, anterior is front, posterior is back of the head, this is occipital, visual lobe, this is. So, what we do is we put things like this, we put one channel, one channel on the eye here and one channel here to catch up eye movement. We put something here on the chin, chin gives you enough to tell you whether the muscle tone is increasing or not and this previous thing which I showed was EEG, we just put one or maybe put two on both side to get such pattern of EEG. So, EEG as I said rhythms 0 0.5 to 4, 4 to 7, 8 to 13, 13 onwards. So, this is a normal awake, this keeps decreasing to this as sleep onset and this is stage 3 and 4. In REM, in this is the pattern which we see desynchronized awake. See, this is the type of stuff, if you just notice it as I change the slide, you can see this this is the muscle, normal muscle tone, normal muscle tone and this is what we get on a record. In comp this is a paper recording, but on a paper see, these are the eye movements, this is the EEG, this is the chin thing, muscle, all right. So, stage 1, you can see the difference. The stage 1 looks like this, this is a normal awake maybe somewhere around if you if you just take this much, this is 5 second, uh, within 1 second you have to see how much frequency around 7 or 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so somewhere around 7 to 9 hertz. The stage 2, if you see it is slowing down, the stage 3 is further slows down and what you start getting are sleep spindles and K complexes what you call and this is slow, this is totally slowed down, this is 4 hertz, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
ok. This is abnormal when you see in awake people, in sleep it is normal. So, this is normal sleep, this is what you see chin EMG. Now, why do you need this? Because you want to see what you call rapid eye movement and you want to see muscle dystonia. Okay. So, muscle dystonia and this together will tell you whether person is in REM or NREM. EEG will tell you, but EEG in itself will not tell you whether it is NREM or REM. And this is what we get, we, we call it this whole recording of total full night is called polysomnography. Somno is sleep, poly is multiple channels and graph. So, this is what you get. So, you get how many times the person really get up, when was the sleep onset, these are the awake 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this this is what you get of any, any sleep disorder center. They will put you in the, put electrodes on your chin, on your eye, on your scalp, record all night and in the night after that they will pro produce a report where say the percent of sleep performance time, REM was 8.3 percent, the stage 2 was 41.7 depending on what this is and you can also add more things, you can put some pulse oximeter here or, or here which will tell you how much oxygen saturation level was there. This is important for an illness called obstructive sleep apnea which is one of the commonest illness which we see and which is one of the commonest cause of accidents. Oxygen saturation, how many times oxygen fell in the body? Body position. Okay, so now before we, I come and talk to you about uh, the, the disorders, understand because sleep is naturally required and sleep keeps varying from your birth till your old age which is in a natural process there lot of myths which go around it. People come and ask at how many hours are required. Now, somebody may be okay with 6 hours, somebody may not be okay with 10 hours, but largely as I said 4 to 10, the need for sleep in adolescent increases. They have a phase shift also, they will never sleep at 10 o'clock and get up at 6. That rhythm is already gone because of the modern lifestyle. There is also something called uh, what you call afternoon siesta. After 8 hours after getting up from sleep, there is a pressure of sleep which is called afternoon nap. It is a natural and normal thing. The problem is that we are living in a modern lifestyle where we find pride in running and not sleeping and not taking adequate rest. So, some people who sleep in the afternoon for half an hour, a 20 minute or 30 minute nap 8 hour after getting up is normal. It actually uh, freshens you up for the rest of the day, but people think it is abnormal. So, it is a pride not sleeping in the afternoon, but that is not a pride, that is actually you are living against nature. Adolescents sleep more, parents always get into conflict, exam time, what the problem with exam time is that in the board exams come when people are 14, 15 to 18 and they are, they need more sleep. Plus, this sleep pattern goes into a phase delay, they will sleep late, get up late. We are still hooked on to that same old sunlight pattern, the brain is also trained to sunlight pattern. But artificial lights plus all this gadgetry which we use, this lot of information which goes into the head has to be uh, processed by the brain. So, in times of stress, some people sleep more because uh, obviously their mind needs to process more. A lot of information which goes into the head, the in the during the dream, dream sleep, the brain will normally uh, try to fit in. and. Uh, so, in that, in that sense, everything which is related to sleep is not a problem. Sleep also has a good way of bouncing back, as and when you have a problem, it may go down, it may come up, but largely your patterns remain the same. So, now I will talk to you about how do you approach the problem of all the symptomatology which is associated with sleep and they are common things which you, whether you are a doctor or not, uh, you can always be an advisor, a lot of these things come up in families which are some of them are normal developmental issues. Okay, so, we look at 
treat these lectures in continuity. Uh, general approach I will talk about this general approach to sleep problems, which you may encounter anywhere in your life in the last lecture of uh, this course. Um, see you in the last lecture. Thank you.